This has got to be one of the most compelling closing arguments I've seen to date or in a long time. And you usually don't get them. I mean, you'll get some closing arguments. They're pretty good. This one, the prosecuting attorney, Mrs. Hutchinson, was just brilliant in her presentation, how she brought it, brought it in. I mean, it covered the drama of it, the suspense, intrigue, tragedy, heartbreaking, and horror. All in one 25-minute closing argument. I mean, if you were on the jury seat, you would just be like it, it's a, a bad movie. And how the prosecution, Mrs. Hutchinson, showcasing what the two parents had did to their innocent little baby. Now, before we get started uh, playing that, let me bring you a little bit up to speed on the case. If if you if you're not familiar with this case, this is baby Dylan. Dylan was born in January of 2019. I mean, this this little boy's life was doomed. From the moment he was conceived. Dylan's life was tragic. From that moment. And why do I say this? Well his mother. Was taking meth. And this poor baby. His mother was supposed to love. And protect him. But she didn't even. Protect him by keeping her own body healthy. Exposing him to this. He was born with meth in his system. And he had shown. He had begun to show signs of uh, the withdrawals. And this also. This happened in Portsmouth, Ohio. And Dylan's parents are. Jessica, 39, and Daniel is 41. Because of the math in uh, Dylan's system, uh, the county children's services took former custody of him. This is at his birth. There were red flags when the mother came in. She didn't want any pain medication. She had no prenatal care. She just comes in and... And it just sent red flags to the nurse. Of course, they're going to go and do toxicologies and things on the baby. But Dylan was then placed with his father after his father was evaluated and deemed fit and able to, to take care of him. But Jessica, a former nurse, she was allowed to visit the family home, but... Uh, she couldn't live there. Now, her being a former nurse, she should have known the dangers of meth and what it does to your brain and your body and, good Lord, on what it does to a pregnant woman to her child in utero. It's unbelievable. She was not permitted to live there, but she could go visit. Now, after a while, the authorities opened up an investigation after Daniel, the father, missed court dates, home visits, doctor's appointments. Now, keep in mind, Dylan was born in January of 2019. So now, four months have gone by. It's May 3rd. A caseworker finally decides, oh, well, I can't get a hold of them. They're missing all these court dates and all these home visits. I need some help. So she calls authorities and she, she's asking for help, finally. I get it that social services are overwhelmed. But they definitely failed 
this child. And I don't know, should they be held accountable too? Because they were supposed to keep following up on this baby? It's just, uh, let me know what y'all think about that. I mean, that's a whole nother show talking about the social services system and dealing with children. So again, on May 3rd, that caseworker decides, oh, we can't find him. I don't know where this kid is. I haven't been able to evaluate him and see how his health is. Because of all the court dates and such. So right now, now, three more weeks have gone by of being unable to find them. To find Daniel and Jessica. So the deputies locate them. They were, uh, they were near their home riding around on some four-wheelers. When the deputy approached them, they fled into the woods. They took off. Now, on June 10th, the deputies executed a search warrant for Daniel's home, and he, they eventually took Jessica into custody without, without incident. But Daniel, however... He decides to barricade himself inside the home. And it took him six hours at a standoff before he was arrested. Now, both of these two, Jessica and Daniel, they both pled not guilty. Because they searched the, they searched the property. They end up finding the baby in a well. And these two claim not guilty. The baby was found in a well, and his body was wrapped in layers of plastic, sealed with duct tape. You got milk crates involved, and they dropped him down in a well. And that's, that's bringing you up to speed. Now, I'm going to play the closing arguments because it is very powerful stuff. Very Stage powerful five, stuff. Ms. Hutchinson? Yes, sir. Ms. Hutchinson, you may address the jury. Thank you. May it please the court, opposing counsel, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Good afternoon. At this point, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is that your service here as jurors is almost complete. The bad news is that the most difficult part of your service is about to begin, and that is your deliberations. His Honor Judge Kuhn will instruct you as to the exact law that you are to follow and what applies in this case, but I'd like to take a few minutes just to assist you in understanding what it is we believe we need to prove here, what we have proved, and how that relates to the charges. We discussed at the beginning of the week as to all charges, the defendants are equally charged and get, can be found guilty as the principal offender or by acting in complicity. In other words, if you find that either of these two defendants aided or abetted the other, each defendant is guilty. His Honor will instruct you that aided and abetted means supported assisted, encouraged, incited, cooperated with, advised. His Honor will further instruct you that complicity includes conspiring with one another to commit offenses. Again, if something I say differs from something Your Honor says, you are to follow his instructions. So let's talk about the charges and the evidence that you've heard this week. Count one again is aggravated murder. The state of Ohio must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendants did or were complicit to purposely. I'm gonna go through some of these individually. Purposely, I submit to you ladies and gentlemen of the jury that multiple rib fractures are purposeful injuries. Those aren't accidental. I submit to you that multiple skull fractures 
that happened at different times, and even at a time different than the rib fractures, are purposeful. I submit to you that the multiple complete arm fractures and leg fractures are purposeful. Calls the death of baby Dylan. Can I say what mechanism was used to cause baby Dylan's injuries? No. And you heard defendant Jessica Gross, she can't remember what happened. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you are the finders of fact. You go back to the jury room and you determine what happened here. What you heard from the witness stand, and you'll be instructed by his honor that you are only to consider evidence that came from that witness stand in the form of testimony or exhibits. Nothing I said, nothing they said, the lawyers, we're not testifying. Only what comes from that witness stand. What did you hear from Dr. Brown? <laughs> Dr. Brown testified that there was actual evidence of homicidal violence that caused baby Dylan's death. All those fractures we just talked about. She testified she couldn't rule in or rule out drowning. Jessica Groves can't remember. Did failure to seek medical emergency medical care after multiple serious injuries over a period of time calls baby Dylan's death. She can't remember. And he did nothing. And the last element is that that baby, baby Dylan, was under 13 years of age at the time of this offense. Well, there's no dispute, because today he would be one if we weren't here discussing his aggravated murder. Count two murder requires the state of Ohio to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that these two defendants did or were complicit in knowingly. His honor will instruct you that a person acts knowingly regardless of their purpose when they're aware that their conduct will create a certain result. Are you aware that three violent incidents <clears throat> is probably going to result in a baby's death? Daniel Groves doesn't see anything wrong with bashing a baby in the head four times. Or picking it up and squeezing it and shaking it. You can do that to a baby? He watched this happen to his own son, baby Dylan, he says by his own wife. The man, the children's services, placed this baby's safety upon, did nothing. That's not complicity. You let her around that baby one more day after you saw that and you're not complicit to this whole thing? Would she have had any other access to this baby but for defendant Daniel Groves? Mm. Mm. Again, count two murder knowingly calls the death of baby Dylan as a proximate result of committing or attempting to commit an offense of violence that is a felony of the first or second degree, felonious assault over and over and over. Count three, kidnapping, requires us to prove that these defendants in this case, again, baby Dylan was under 13, so by any, man, any means, that they remove baby Dylan from the place where he was found or restrain his liberty for the purpose of hindering, impeding, or obstructing a governmental function. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that every single time these two defendants withheld baby Dylan from children's services, they committed a kidnapping. You heard the testimony 
The initial plan involved children's services seeing face-to-face -face baby Dylan weekly. At some point, maybe that went to monthly. You all determine that. And you also heard the children's services workers say that at any time if they requested to see this baby, these defendants were to submit to that request. Whether children's services filed or asked ch criminal charges to be filed on each of those occasions is not an issue here because you're the finders of fact. You go back there and determine whether or not they violated the law. I submit to you they did. Between February 4th and February 25th, children's services caseworker testified there were numerous attempts to contact these defendants about baby Dylan such that they ended up going to Daniel Jr.'s school to try to pass messages to his parents. And again, from that visit on February 25th to March 28th, numerous attempts to make contact. After March 28th, to June, when baby Dylan's body was recovered, numerous attempts to make contact by children's services, by law enforcement, by juvenile court. Count four, endangering children. As a parent, guardian, custodian, person having custody or control, in loco parentis of a child under the age of 18. These defendants at the time, the testimony was, were not the custodians. Children's services were the custodians. But they were certainly the parents, and they were certainly the people in control. Therefore, they had a duty to prevent substantial risks of health and safety to baby Dylan. And they violated that duty of care, <coughs> protection, and it resulted in serious physical harm, actually death, so more than serious physical harm. Did either of these defendants tell you that they made one emergency phone call to help that baby? Could he have survived his injuries? I don't know. He wasn't given a chance. Did Daniel Groves create a substantial risk to the health or safety of baby Dylan, therefore violating his duty? His duty. Children's Services made that his duty to take care of and protect baby Dylan from serious physical harm and death by allowing her to come right back around after she bashed him in the face four times and squeezed him by the rib cage? He was foolishly unaware, they say. Count six, interference with custody. Did they know they didn't have the privilege to do what they were doing? Or were they reckless in that regard? Did they keep or harbor baby Dylan from the custodian, from children's services? And did that result in harm to baby, physical harm to baby Dylan? Count seven, gross abuse of a corpse. Treating baby Dylan's body in a way that would outrage reasonable community sensibilities. These defendants dumped him in a dark 30-foot well of water and left him there for months. And I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that had Detective Conkle not had the training and experience to put them in a room together and listen to what they were saying, we would have never found baby Dylan's body. You listen to the whispering. If they find his body, we're effed.
felonious assault, knowingly causing serious physical harm to baby Dylan. Four counts. Rib fractures, significant calcification, two inch skull fracture, some healing, not as much as the rib fractures. One inch skull fracture, complete upper arm fracture, complete lower leg fracture, large chest contusion, swelling to his abdomen. Those are all separate counts because they're all separate injuries. There was nothing that came out of that witness stand that explained that how those injuries could have all happened at one time. So you have multiple counts to consider. You are also the judges of credibility. The sole judges of credibility and his honor will instruct you that you are. So you determine who sits on that witness stand and who's telling the truth. Whether you believe some of it, all of it, none of it, you determine that. So let's talk about reasons why you may or may not believe defendant Daniel Groves. First, it was that Children's Services took the baby. Then, it was that he just found baby Dylan dead. Nobody killed him. Next, he told Daniel Jr. the dream catcher hurt the baby. Then, in a jail visit, he tells a female he didn't kill him or dump his body. He didn't have anything to do with any of this. And yet another version that we heard in here this morning was that he watched his wife strike that child in the head four times and snatch him up by the ribs. You all go back there and decide what's, what's truth and what's not. If you believe that he wasn't the principal, then discuss whether or not he was complicit. And we've talked about some of that, about children's services placing the baby with this defendant. Why else would you collect the urine of your 15-year-old son, put it in a small bottle with a lid on it, for his buddy. So had there been an actual urine test, maybe he wouldn't have even had placement. <clears throat> Sounds like he facilitated this whole thing from the word go. Damn. He was foolishly unaware. What was said in opening statements? Foolishly unaware. They want you to believe that these two defendants wouldn't scheme up a way to tamper with urine. These two defendants who wrapped that baby boy in six layers of plastic and duct tape and chained his body inside a milk crate, loaded it on a four-wheeler and drove it and dumped it in a well. But they wouldn't tamper with urine specimens. How is he complicit? Who was it that Children's Services was having all that contact with? She testified it was Daniel Groves, that he had four different phone numbers she was trying to communicate with. How is he complicit? He was foolishly unaware that his wife was pregnant for so long, yet their 15-year-old son knew and confronted her. He was foolishly unaware that she was getting so high 
yet everybody at the hospital recognized it. He was foolishly unaware that she was not going to the Mahajan appointment. Why not rat her out for all this? Could it be because he's high right along with her? You heard Detective Conkle testify that he's dope sick rolling around the interrogation room. Baby Dylan was injured so seriously. You've seen the pictures. You heard that 15 year old little boy describe that baby as having bruising all around where his hair would be expected. How would he describe that picture from the autopsy if that wasn't the way that baby looked? But defendant Daniel Groves didn't know And Daniel Jr. said it was a matter of time, after he sees this, that the baby disappeared. He didn't know. He couldn't have called right then for emergency medical assistance to give baby Dylan a chance to survive. I submit to you that's the least he could have done. You're expected to believe that these parents, who everyone from the hospital testified, never asked questions about that baby when he was removed and couldn't breathe, stayed glued to each other, and then packaged up their baby and threw him in a 30-foot well, were suddenly so caring that they wanted to hold baby Dylan every time Patricia Kraft was there. Do you suppose that's so she wouldn't touch him and figure out he had injuries? You heard the phone call with her sister. Together, for better or worse, till death do us part. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that's the way it's been from the time that baby was born to right here this week. Against their own children. You were told at the beginning of this, Jessica Groves is going to take responsibility. Did she take responsibility when she spoke with Detective Conkle? She take responsibility when she spoke to her sister? Did she take responsibility in here this morning when she spoke to you? She can't remember what happened, but she does remember it was an accident. Is that taking responsibility for these injuries? You're expected to believe defendant Daniel Groves Everything he said in here. The same guy who, after they say the baby was dead, tells Children's Services in a text message he's growing like a weed. <coughs> you were told that Daniel Groves panicked and dumped baby Dylan in a 30-foot well. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, does this look like panic to you? Does it? A chain, three padlocks, 12 zip ties, eight wire ties, 18 rocks, six layers of plastic and duct tape. Does this look like panic? I submit to you it looks like extreme planning.
They want you to believe they're not complicit to their baby's murder. But this, this is what they chose for a coffin and his burial? This? And then they dumped him in a well. Beyond a reasonable doubt, guilty on each and every count. Each one of them. Three padlocks, 12 zip ties, eight wire ties, 18 rocks, six layers of plastic and duct tape. Does this look like panic? I submit to you it looks like extreme planning. They want you to believe they're not complicit to their baby's murder, but this, this, is what they chose for a coffin and his burial? This? She had turned and the defendants were sitting there and she held that up to them. And you can hear it in her voice, the passion. I think she felt, I mean, I'm hearing it in her voice that this, this affected her in her closing argument. Now, there is a clip of the of Jessica taking the stand, and she just attacks her. I think we're going to take a look at that because it is it is phenomenal that y'all let me know what you think, but this was so compelling and so so full of energy and passion. I mean, you could hear it in her voice, her face her body language, and what she's saying. That these, these parents are pathetic. What they did to this baby. And they were being tried separately with two different attorneys, which I've never seen a case like that. It's not like I'm an expert, but Daniel had an attorney, and then Jessica had an attorney, and then they were all taking turns getting up doing their thing, you know, throughout throughout the trial. But let's take a look at Jessica's uh, testimony. Um, let's take a look at that. At this point, the prosecution had rested, and the defense is taking over, and their first witness is Jessica. Now, I thought about just playing when she's getting uh, on cross with the prosecution, but I think we need to get a taste of how this is going for the questioning that the defense is asking her and then watch Mrs. Hitchigen get up and just hammer her, which she probably shouldn't have took the stand because how can she be defended in, in any of this? What is her explanation? How could it justify any of this? Swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes, Please have a seat. <clears throat> Jessica, please state your name on the record. Jessica Groves. You can scoot your chair up there a little bit if you will. I would actually speak up to the court reporter. Jessica, did you and you only Cause the death of your son, Dylan Groves. Yes. Did Daniel Groves participate in the killing of Dylan? Dylan? No. Was Daniel Groves aware of any of the injuries that you caused, Dylan, that may have led to his death? No. Did you hide all injuries that you caused, Dylan? from your husband? Yes. You're not going to object all these questions. <coughs> leading questions. Sustain, rephrase your questions. Are we approach, Your Honor. Uh, on that issue, you need to approach. Just rephrase your questions. <laughs> Jessica Rose. 
Did you only assist in the placement of Dylan's body after his death? Sustained. Rephrase the question, Mr. Shrek. No lead. I have a second, Your Honor. You may. Damn, look at him. He's all like... His life is over. <clears throat> Jessica Groves. The injuries that Dylan sustained happened on what date? March 27th. Dylan died on what date? March 28th. As she previously testified, Patricia Kraft said that she had looked at Dylan. Did she do anything else? Objection. Leading. Your Honor. Did Patricia Traff do anything else to examine no. Dylan? Where did you take <laughs> Dylan after he died? He was at our house for a couple of days. And then where did you take him? To the well. Did you murder Dylan Jackson. Gross? Did you murder Dylan Gross? Not intentionally. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Stratton, Ms. Scott, do you wish to cross-examine the witness? Not at this time, Your Honor. Thank you. Does the state wish to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. Oh my God, the defense is pathetic. I mean, what else are they going to do, right? Oh my God. Not intentionally? She shook him? Clobbered him in the head? He had broken ribs, broken arm? Fractures to his skull? She didn't intentionally kill him. No, it was an accident. Such and you may inquire. Oh, and this is going to be brutal, by the way. Probably. <laughs> Tell the jury how you killed this baby. It was an accident. Not your excuse. How did you murder this baby? How did you cause these injuries? I have sit here and admitted Answer the question, please. How did you cause these injuries? It was an accident. Not your excuse for what happened. How did you cause these injuries? How did you cause those rib fractures? Oh, my God. By dropping him. By dropping him. How did you cause those, that first two-inch skull fracture? I don't remember. How did you cause that one inch skull fracture? It had to be from dropping him. How did you cause that complete upper arm fracture? Nothing that I ever did was intentional. I'm not asking for your excuse. How did you cause that complete upper arm fracture? Tell the jury. I have to live with this for the rest of Answer my the life. How did you cause that? Complaint? You have devoured Ma my family. Ms. Ms. Rose, you answer the questions that are asked of you. You understand? I've admitted to my guilt. How did you? And I have to live without you, my children. I'm done talking to you. You are talking to me because you're sitting on the witness stand. Tell them how you 
cause that injury. Good Lord. Judge, I ask you to instruct the witness to answer the question. Ms. Rose, by testifying, you're subject to cross-examination. You have to answer the questions on cross-examination that are relevant to these proceedings. This question is a relevant question. You will answer the question at this time. My God, what did the defense think was going to happen? With this prosecution attorney, she is brutal. Oh my God. Uh, we'll remind you of my earlier admonition to you to not discuss this case amongst yourselves or with anyone else. Do not permit anyone to discuss it with you or in your presence. It's your duty not to form or express an opinion on this case until it's finally submitted to you. Ms. Groves, you should remain seated where you're at. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you are excused at this time. I have never seen this. Only a smidgen, maybe a minute clip of it. So I didn't realize the jury needed to leave the room. Yes, I'm going to give you an opportunity to discuss, advise your client as the ramifications of failing to submit herself to cross-examination in this matter. If she does not do that, I am going to strike her testimony in order for the jury not to consider. Do you understand? You can discuss it with her up there off the record. If you need more privacy, we'll ask the spectators to leave. Um, I expect her to submit herself to cross-examination in this matter. I would ask the spectators to leave the courtroom. E even if he struck her testimony, it wouldn't have hurt or, or helped her case. Good Lord. Court is recessed. No oh, crap. CR 586 A and B, State of Ohio versus Daniel Groves, and State of Ohio versus Jessica Groves. We were beginning the cross examination of the defendant Jessica Groves in this matter. Ms. Hutchinson, you may inquire of the witness. Tell the jury how you caused that complete upper arm fracture. Remember. You don't remember? No, I don't. You remember the day those, you said the injuries were caused on the 27th, and he died on the 28th, so you remember all that detail, but you don't remember how you caused that upper arm fracture? No, I don't. Tell the jury why you wrote on your calendar on April 24th, worst day ever when Daniel was taken, but there was no entry about the worst day ever when you killed that baby. Damn. I didn't kill my baby. It you didn't? It was an accident. How did you cause those injuries? I don't remember. Then how do you remember it was an accident? Because I would never hurt my children intentionally. Never. How did you cause those injuries? I don't remember. I done told you that. And the worst day ever, the day that I lost my last child. Both of my children. Look at this photograph, Jessica Gross. How do you not remember that? Tell the jury how it's possible that you would not remember doing that. If, in fact, you did it. Oh, my God. Ma'am, tell the jury how you would not remember that. Because my mind wasn't clear. Why? Because of drugs. Are you telling this jury that 
all of these injuries occurred at one time <coughs> in one incident? No. How many times did you attack Baby Dylan? I never attacked him. Then how many accidents did you have, Jessica Gross? I don't remember. Tell him what the accidents were. You keep asking me the same questions and because you're not the answering same the answers. question, ma'am. I told you I don't remember. When was it that your husband realized you were pregnant? Wait a minute. When was it you realized you were pregnant? Probably when I was about five and a half months. Which was when? What month? October. When was it your husband knew you were pregnant? Toward the end of October, beginning of November. How is it your husband didn't know you were <coughs> Doped up the whole time you were pregnant. Because I kept it a secret. Why did you tell your why did you guys tell your son that a dream catcher hurt that baby? Because it did. Tell the jury about that. You said you didn't remember. <coughs> tell the jury what you what happened with that dream catcher. I didn't think that dream catcher had injuries to that extent. So that accident didn't cause his death? No. Tell him what accident did. I don't remember. <coughs> Why didn't you tell Jody Conkle there were all these accidents that killed my baby? Because I was scared. Of what? Everything. What's everything? You were scared of what? Of admitting the truth. Well, tell the jury what the truth is. I you didn't tell Detective Conkle what the truth was. You didn't tell your son what the truth was. Tell this jury what the truth is. I don't remember at all. Why didn't you tell your sister Stacy Hall what the truth was? You told her this had nothing to do with drugs. I swear, nothing, Stacy. I would tell you. Me and Stacy did not grow up together. Me and Stacy has not had a lot of communication over my four years. Ma'am, why didn't you tell Stacy the truth? That's the question. Why would I? Why wouldn't you? I've never had any family support. Over my 40 my years. History, Why didn't you tell Stacy the truth? Why would I? Don't ask me questions. Me and her is not question. that close. She is a half sister okay. that we have never had that close relationship. So, but, so you lied to her? Yes, I did. And you lied to your son? Yes, I did. And you lied to Detective Conkle? Yes, I did. But you want this jury to believe you just don't remember and you're not lying to them. Look at these ladies and gentlemen and tell them. <laughs> I can't tell you something that I can't remember. Who and wrapped this never baby's body hurt. in six layers of plastic and duct tape? Who did that? I did. You did. Daniel Groves didn't help you with that? <laughs> Yes, he did. Tell him what happened. Tell him about that concealment. I wanted to be able to go back and get my baby. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm not asking you for comments. Tell the jury about the day you wrapped that baby in plastic. Tell him what happened. I don't quite remember it all. You don't remember that either. I know it happened. I remember bits and pieces, but no, I don't remember. Because when he died, part of me died. And 
I've just been on autopilot. Ma'am, look at this picture. I don't. Ma'am, look at this picture. Ma'am, look at this Outside, I guess. You guess. No, I'm asking you for real. Where'd you get all this stuff? I sure didn't get it out from under the kitchen sink. Are you gonna answer the question? Outside. <coughs> you don't remember this chain, those six layers of plastic and duct tape? Three padlocks, 12 zip ties, eight wire ties, 18 rocks. You don't remember that? Not in detail, no I don't. That's not a whole heck of a lot of planning? No. Why would you do that if you didn't murder this baby on purpose? Because I was scared. Scared of what? Losing everything. Now why are you here telling this jury the story today? Objection. She needs to allow her time. She's not answering the question. Don't talk over each other. Yes, Your Honor. I want you to explain to the jury this process up here. I can't. Why? Because I don't recall. Who drove baby Dylan out to that well? We both did. Tell the jury how that happened and what you did. We took him out to the well. How'd you get there? On the four-wheeler. And then what? We put him in the well, then we sit in the field and cried. Why is it that when we watch this video of you and your husband at the sheriff's office, there's not all this crying? I'm, I'm so worried about the dogs. Is that what you said? I was in shock. I've been in shock. I've never got a chance to grieve the death of my baby. Judge, I have additional questions, but I'm not going to ask them. Ms. Hutchinson, Mr. Stratton, any redirect? Just like Jessica, everything you're saying today is the truth. Yes. You're finally coming clean, correct? Yes, I am. Nature of the objection. He's leading the witness again. Rephrase your question, Mr. Strad. <coughs> Is there anything that the prosecutor has said you did not do? I did not kill my baby intentionally. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Stratton, Ms. Scott, any cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor, a few questions. Ms. Groves, I know that you're claiming that you don't remember a lot of the details um, in this situation. However, do you recall whether or not Daniel Groves participated in the actions that caused D Dylan's death? No, he did not. Okay. Um, did he in any way cause Dylan's death? No. 
Did the dream catcher falling on the baby cause some bruising on Dylan's head? Slightly. Okay. Is that what we heard Daniel Jr. testify to yesterday? Yes. Was there a laceration as a result of that bruising? No. Did that result in his death in any way? No. Originally, you were scared of admitting the truth, correct? Yes. You're admitting to that truth during the course of this trial? Yes, I am. And the truth includes that Daniel Groves did not participate in Dylan's death, correct? Correct. You lied to many people in this case, correct? Yes, I have. Ms. Hutchinson asked you if you lied to your sister. You did? Yes. Mr. Ms. Hutchinson asked if you lied to your son. You did? Yes. Did you also lie to your husband? Yes. You're trying to set the record straight through this trial, correct? Yes, I am. The only part that Dylan, or I'm sorry, the only part that Daniel Groves participated in was helping you to dispose of Dylan's body and place his body in the well after he was deceased, correct? Yep. He was not aware of any of your actions that caused baby Dylan to pass away, correct? No, he was not. Did he help you hide those actions? Yes. But only by disposing of the body after Dylan had already passed away, correct? Yes. You both took great care to wrap his body in plastic? Yes, we did. And that was for the purpose of maybe retrieving his body at a later time, correct? Yes. Did Daniel in any way, or Daniel did not in any way, know of any of your activity that caused a skull fracture that had healed on a prior occasion, did he? No, he did not. When that injury occurred, there was no outward signs of a cut, was there? No, there was not. In regards to the rib fractures that he received that we heard about that were healing, were there any outward signs that Daniel would have been aware of to show that that injury had happened? No, there was not. Okay. And it is correct that baby Dylan passed away on March the 28th. Correct. You and you alone were the one that caused the death of the baby Dylan. Yes, I was. There was nothing that Daniel did that caused his death, correct? Correct. There was nothing that he did that hid your actions other than helping you to assist him or assist you in hiding the baby after he had passed away, correct? Correct. Thank you. I have no further questions at this time. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Any recross by the state? Yes, Your Honor.
object. I do not believe that that was the characterization of, or the nature of the testimony yesterday. Oh. How is it that your son saw this baby's head swollen and black, but your husband didn't? Look at the jury. Explain that to them. I can't explain that to him because... I don't know. You don't know. You seem to know a lot of answers to Ms. Scott's question. Answer the question to the jury. How did your 15-year-old son see these injuries, know about them, but your husband didn't? Ms. Burroughs. I don't know. Thank you, Ms. Hutchinson. Ma'am, you may step down. Have a seat, Council Wow. That was intense. That was brutal. I don't know what they were thinking. This is why defendants probably should not take the stand. What were they expecting her to say? I'm whacked out on drugs. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. But she remembered other details. She remembered them. Obviously, she, she had to remember. He testified. That he saw her pick shaking the baby. Unbelievable. Jessica Groves. She was found guilty. And she was sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Thank God. The jury only deliberated for a few hours before finding her guilty of aggravated murder, abuse of a corpse, and some other charges. Now, the father was also, he was found guilty. And he, he was convicted of murder, abuse of a corpse. But he was acquitted on aggravated murder. And a judge sentenced him to life in prison with parole eligibility in 47 years. But he, he's already, he was 41 at the time. Good night, he's going to, he'll probably die in prison. Unless they do some kind of good behavior and let him out. But, uh, wow. This was... This was a horrible case. Horrible. Horrible. And the tragedy. These people on drugs. Not taking care of their baby. Not taking care of her body while she's pregnant. Hiding it from her husband. Him being complicit. Him claiming that he saw her shaking the baby. And like he didn't see bruises on the kid. If he's taking care of the kid 24 hours a day. We all know infants need 24 hour care. Giving them baths, feeding them, changing them. And he and his attorney's like, oh, so he didn't help you, right? He 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 didn't help you murder the baby, but he just helped you dispose of the body. He didn't know about it. They were probably both doing drugs together, obviously, because they wanted he wanted a urine sample from his son, his 14-year-old son, so he could pass a drug test. I don't know. It's pretty tragic all the way around. Uh, this was a heart-wrenching story. The parents are pathetic. Her being a nurse. Knowing what these drugs do to you. How could she, how could she ingest methamphetamine when you know and see what it does to people what it does to an unborn baby are you insane I don't understand it why people would ingest these things seeing what it does to you what it does to people but anyway I hope y'all enjoyed that I guess that's lack of a better word huh um, I was fascinated with the case. 
Uh, if you haven't, go take a look and watch it. Uh, he got on the stand, too. The, the His defense attorney put him on the stand. And I haven't seen that. Uh, him being crossed. I bet it was brutal. I bet it was brutal. But if y'all are interested, I'll leave a link in the description where you can go to Court TV and they have the whole whole trial and sections and uh go check it out well anyway thank you for joining me and y'all have a wonderful day